What's up everybody, it's Jet Desert Fox, back with another straight out of the box. This is the video series in which I get a gun from a retailer or manufacturer, unbox it in front of you all, and give you my unbiased opinions. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Airsoft Innovations Flak 10 Super Shotgun. This is the same Airsoft company that has produced such fine products as the Tornado 2 and the Master Mic and 40 Mic 40mm grenades. I am very, very excited to take a look at this new Super Shotgun from Airsoft Innovations. So here we have the box for the Flak, for the Flak 10 Super Shotgun. On the front, it just says Flak. We've got the Airsoft Innovations logo. This like neon sticker thing. Oh, okay, this is what's holding the box closed. On the sticker, it's gonna give us a couple specifications for the gun, BBs per shot, 10, adjustable FPS, 180 to 310. Magazine that accepts, M4, M16. Propellant, 1,000 round capacity, woo. Let's break the seal and open this baby up. Inside the box, we've got instructions, which are thoughtfully uh, put into this splash guard. We've got a diagram of the whole gun, warnings, do not use CO2, do not use HPA, don't exceed 60 PSI on the regulator. Uh, oh, this is, all, this is all really good information to know so you don't go breaking your gun. On the other side, we basically have the instructions on how to do everything. So we've got filling the gas, changing your muzzle brake, ooh, changing out the magazine rip out force, or the hop up adjustment, and how to set your FPS. Very handy that this is all included. Now, um, it is missing some of the other basics for Airsoft. However, I feel like if you are buying this gun, you probably have been playing for a while and already know how to do a lot of the other basics. And then we got this other little package. This is another muzzle, silicone oil, and an extra valve and another piece. Uh, not sure what this other black piece is. Protecting the gun is some bubble wrap and some cardboard. Also in the box is a magazine. It is a mid cap mag. Then nothing under this cardboard. Then we have the gun itself. So this is the super shotgun. Start from the front to rear. We have our muzzle. This thing is gigantic. Holy cow. Um, and I guess this is gonna, you can switch this out for the one in here. Not quite sure what the difference is. Your gun includes a bonus zero spread muzzle brake and a medium spread muzzle brake, which is factory installed. Brakes are marked zero, which is no spread, and M. At 10 feet, you're gonna get about a two inch wide spread of BBs. Pretty huge, that's like, that's like this. And if you're aiming center mass, that's 10 BBs that's going to impact, that's potentially 10 BBs that's gonna impact on one person. So the marking is here on the side of the muzzle brake, so this is the zero spread. Okay, so we've got the medium spread already on there. That's definitely the one I want. So we're just gonna put that aside. We're not gonna, not gonna use that one. We've got a lot of M-Lock rail slots. On the top of the gun is where the fill valve is located. Behind the fill valve, we have Picatinny rail space. And in between these two rail segments is the FPS adjustment and the hop-up adjustment. As we look at this in the diagram, the diagram orients the gun like this. It says, do not play with this front screw. This next bigger hole is how to set your FPS. And then the smaller hole is the hop-up adjustment. In the instructions given, it tells you which way to increase and decrease the hop-up. Okay, that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for the top of the gun. Let's take a look at the pistol grip. The pistol grip is an Ergo pistol grip. It's rubberized with a little bit of texture, which is nice. Ooh, this feels nice. Yeah, I like that. Inside the pistol grip, you've got this little hidden compartment that holds the hex keys that you need to adjust the FPS and your hop up. If you've been watching my reviews for a while, you know I'm not a big fan of using tools to adjust hop up or FPS, anything like that, because normally those tools are immediately lost. Uh, Airsoft Innovations, probably keeping that in mind, has smartly put all of that stuff here and it's on the gun. Like this thing cannot just fall out of the gun. It's very, very, very secure. It takes kind of a lot of pressure just to pull it out. Uh, and then you can also store 
you know, other little tools in here that you might need, maybe a screwdriver, although I don't see any screws on here, but very, very well thought out placement for the tools necessary to use this gun. Okay, here we have the safety. The safety is ambidextrous. Next, we have the magazine well. You'll notice that the Super Shotgun is a bullpup design, meaning that the magazine goes toward the rear. Now, there is no magazine release button on this gun. They are using a rip out system and in theory this should make your reload a lot faster because you're eliminating one step which is pushing a button so the magazine should simply insert and then when it's time to reload you just rip it out of the gun on a traditional bullpup design you would have to reach for the gun hit some sort of button either with your index finger or thumb take the magazine out and then reload this all you need to do once it's time to reload is simply grab the magazine, take it out, and install a new one. The benefits to that are highly subjective. I think it's a nice design. This gun, obviously, whew, this airsoft gun is obviously not a replica of anything real, so, and it's basically just pure sporterized airsoft. Let's give it a test shot. Full can of Elite Force Green Gas. Fill this up. This is also going to be a test to see if anything is leaking. Hopefully not. I will be immensely saddened if there is a leak somewhere in this gun. So please don't leak. Please don't leak. Now, one of the key features that Airsoft Innovations advertised for this gun is that it will hold enough propellant for a thousand BBs. So this thing should have a very efficient gas system inside of it. All right, let's point this in a somewhat safe direction and fire it. <laughs> Sounds a little funny. It's a little weird. It's it's almost like a polar star because there's no feedback from the gun whatsoever. It's it's just literally point and click. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard this noise in airsoft from a gun before. Like I'm trying I'm trying to think of what sounds like this. Non-blowback gas pistol. Non-blowback, it, it, it's, it's like it's like an oversized non-blowback. All right, we're gonna fill this with some more gas and then take it outside for chrono. Before we chrono, there is a little section down here on the bottom that says check FPS with crony. I guess that's what they call a chronograph in Canada. Now it says a crony cannot measure the FPS of a full five or 10 shot BB blast from the shotgun. Point the gun up and drop one BB into the muzzle brake and into the barrel. Fire the one BB through the crony to determine FPS. Okay, that's very good to know because a lot of times with uh, specialty guns like these, it is very complicated to try and chrono something. Uh, for example, any of the micro Gatling guns or mini guns, I'm very glad that this is included in the instructions with this gun. Very, very helpful. We're going to be using Elite Force 0.28 gram BBs for the chrono test. And we're going to be just dropping a single BB down into the barrel. So that way we can get these chrono readings. So these spare BBs up here. First shot. Did not read. I think we hit the side of the Corona. I gotta adjust this just a tiny bit. Let's drop another BB down the barrel. There we go. That was 0 0.608 joules at 65 meters a second. I don't know why that's on meters. Let's uh, change that. Okay, now we're back on feet per second. There we go. 0.558 joules at 207 feet per second. Now this is completely unadjusted, stock out of the box, fully loaded with green gas, or at least what I think is fully loaded with green gas. Okay, shot number three. 0 0.0, oh, I'm sorry, 0.697 joules, 231 feet per second. There we go. 0.669 joules at 226 feet per second. Okay, so we'll go ahead and stop that there. So we've got a, about an average of around 215 feet per second per the single BBs coming out. 
which honestly, that is lower than a Tokyo Marui. Obviously, it's gonna be a lot different than getting hit with a Tokyo Marui because now instead of getting hit by one BB at you know a very low FPS, you're getting hit by 10 BBs at a very low FPS. All right, let's move on to test fire. Okay, refilled the FLAC 10 with some more green gas. I've got a PTS EPM-1 mid cap filled with ASG Blaster Tracer BBs because these are the BBs that I'm gonna be using later in the gameplay footage for this video. Slap this magazine in the gun, see if this magazine will feed. Oh, heard it click in and BB cycle into the gun. That's great. Let's fire it. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. It's, <laughs> they're not even hitting the backstop. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So this is, again, this is the meat. I don't know if you guys can see the BBs in, um, in the camera, but they're going, they're going everywhere. Literally everywhere. Okay. We're out. Oh my gosh. That was, that was incredible. <laughs> that spread is crazy. That is a crazy amount of spread. I'm literally hitting everything over there. I'm hitting the, the metal stand, holding the backstop. I'm hitting the center box. I'm hitting the targets. I'm hitting literally everything standing over there. The spread on this is ridiculous. <laughs> Initial thoughts after the chronograph and test fire. Most notably, the BB spread on this is crazy. I was not expecting how big the spread was with just the medium size break. That at, at about, um, yeah, at, I, think at le I think at 10 feet, it was more than two feet. It just felt like there were BBs going literally everywhere, so let's say you turn a corner and there's just a crowd of people you're probably going to hit everybody uh, when it comes to hitting a single target i think maybe the zero spread might be better but we're going to find out later tonight when we take this thing to tax city this thing eats up a lot of gas i started with two cans of elite force green gas one of them still has a decent amount this one is pretty close to empties and that was about i don't know maybe 20 30 minutes of firing the gun so be advised you are probably going to use a lot of gas uh, if you're going to be using this gun so stock up on green gas or whatever you want to use for your propellant. Let's talk about magazines now. The magazine that it comes with is this Banff magazine, and it is very easy to slide in and out. Obviously, the magazine well is already adjusted for this, so it's pretty easy. I tried using a PTS EP EPM-1 in it, and it is a lot harder to rip this magazine out. In fact, I could just show you right now. The magazine is going to go in quite easily. And then to tear it out, really gotta yank that. Now compared to the Banff mag, it goes in. Oh shoot, there were BBs in there. Safe. <laughs> and then to take it out, very easy. They got me thinking, what, what other magazines are gonna be uh, compatible with this just straight out of the box as is? So let's go down this line real quick and just see what works well and what doesn't work well. This is an older style. PTS EPM goes in. Okay, that one's kind of rough. This is a generic plastic M4. Goes in. Uh, that one's kind of rough too. QRS mag goes in. All right, QRS mag's real easy to get in and out. Not a lot of wobble either. All right, cool, cool. Okay, this is a Crytac mid cap. Goes in, a little bit of wobble. Oh, this one comes out really nice, okay. All right, that one's nice. We've got a G&G &G mid cap. It's a little G&G &G symbol there. This one's full metal. No wobble. Ugh, okay, that one's really hard to get out. Okay, this is, 
an ICS magazine. I don't remember which one this is exactly, but it's got the built-in little magazine pull. This one's plastic. All right, this one's pretty easy to take out. Okay, put that in the easy to, kind of easy to take out pile. We've got an all plastic Elite Force mid-cap magazine. You can see the little Elite Force logo down at the bottom. Goes in easy, a little bit of wobble. Okay, that one's pretty tough to take out. <clears throat> Keep in mind, this magazine rip system can be adjusted. So let's say you have a magazine in this pile and you're like, oh no, I won't be able to use that bag. No, you still can't. I just haven't adjusted this. I'm just checking to see what's, what's gonna work in this thing just out of the box. Next, the trigger pull. Now the trigger is essentially just opening and closing a valve to let the gas in and then shoot all the BBs out. So with that being said, if you do a very light trigger pull or hold it down, then the gas is just gonna kind of like shoot out. Now I'm not, I tried holding the trigger down to see if maybe it'll just give me like a spray of BBs. It doesn't work that way. Uh, but if you are just kind of half pulling the trigger, it's not going to, it's not gonna fire. It'll just kind of like stutter and, and, and I don't know, it just, it just kind of stutters and it doesn't fire. So you really gotta make sure you pull all the way and you're forceful with every shot when you squeeze. Cause again, a hat, like a, a, a small trigger pull will do this. Or something like that. The point of that rant is squeeze the trigger all the way if you have this. Cause if not, It'll do this. Okay, hopefully I didn't break it with that. It's full force night at Tac City, so there is no minimum engagement. I thought this would be the best night to use this gun here since everyone playing knows what they're getting into. Can I get chronoed? Cool. You have to put one single BB down that barrel and then fire it. It's a little, yeah, so get, let's drop another BB in there. You want to put like this this part like resting on that? There you go, it should read now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 225? Yep, that's right. Uh, Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, perfect. Am I able to get into this game? Yes, sir. Sweet. Nice. All right, let's speed soft it up for a little bit. Hey, where? Back corner? Oh, sh I'm going straight across. Oh, hit! Yeah. Sorry. Nice, got that guy. 
many shots it does at once? Nope. Oh, so it's just 10 shots each pool? Yep. Oh, shit. Wow, dude, that sounds, that's painful. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, no. It's shooting on, it's shooting like 0.6 joules. So it's not even a full joule of energy. Uh, uh, that's pretty over no. So like a distance is probably like nothing. Obviously like up close it's gonna hurt, but like what's not gonna hurt up close? Yeah. Oh, sorry. What? How is that guy not hit? <laughs> oh, you already got me with a grenade launcher. Good shot, dude. What's up? Yeah, sure. There you go. Here, I'll trade you. Oh my god. I thought it was gonna be like everywhere, but it's more closed and all that. I was actually a little scared that this was gonna be banned because I saw a lot of people on Instagram talking about like it's already banned at their fields. Yes, yeah, so I can't even use six shot on this. So. Oh really? No. Why? Because six shot is too painful. It's considered more overshooting. Oh, what jewels or FPS are you at with that? I'm at 340 with 0.25s, and I think around 1.7. Okay, so I'm shooting. I'm shooting less than one joule. I'm shooting like 0. 0.6 joules. Oh, okay. And then I'm at like 225. So like, I don't, I don't see how that's gonna hurt. Can I take a look at that? Sure, here, you can shoot it if you want to. Appreciate that. Make sure to give it a full trigger pull. Oh, wow. What's up? Is it a good pull? It is. I just like it that way because when I am offhand, it's, e it's easier to control. And then if I'm gonna switch, I like to be able to like hold something as I like make the transition. <laughs> it's just That's smart though. Just That's personal good. preference. Yeah. The, the, never thought that put it backwards. The, the easiest is just this way. Yeah. Cause like sometimes I'm just too lazy to like, switch like hand. switch arms. Like especially if I'm like, oh, let me just check this corner real quick. Okay, there's no one. What? Bitch! Yeah, he's gonna be right, but I didn't know you did. Holy crap, I lost it. Ten. It's ten? I think I hit you with like Dude, four. Dude, I thought it was three, because I, I have like three little dots in the arm. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that would fall like a lot though. Oh, I heard that was awesome. Yo, I'm going forward through this. Oh, never mind. Watch the left. I'm going to peek the right. All right, one down. I'm going, I'm going through. Oh, nice. Every time you don't check a corner, there's always somebody. I swear to God. Yeah, that would have sucked.
Nice range to kill. Oh man, I'm going this way. Excuse me. <laughs> oh my bad. I was trying to get in this building. <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna go that quick. I got lit up in the back too. My bad, dude. <laughs> My bad, did that hurt? I'm sorry. I, I meant to only squeeze it once. After playing at an indoor field, I took the Flak 10 to my local outdoor Renegade field. A lot of fields around the world have bushes or trees growing on them, and I wanted to see how well the Flak 10 would shoot through thick vegetation. Hit! Yeah. That's nice, dude. Thanks. You got me right on my right cap. I was like, oh, you like guys hear it? Yeah, sure. You can shoot it if you want to. Are you sure? Yeah, go for it. Is the gas mag? No. Oh. Were him. no. Yeah, I saw you post the oh, Instagram. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, that's pretty cool, bro. Yeah. But you got to get close, close, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you're dropping them. You got mine. Let <laughs> I me mean, hit you through this bush. All right, this is through a bush. Oh, yeah, hit him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's basically a, a master mic gas say, system. It's a, it's a master mic. In a gun form. Yeah. The Flak 10 has so far been used at an indoor arena and a forest type environment. We're now at an old Air Force base for Desert Fox events Battle for Los Angeles. For this game, I am a rifleman class, meaning I have no minimum engagement distance and may only fire semi-auto only. I've also adjusted the magazine ripout force so I can use PTS EPM1s for maximum BB capacity per magazine. Unfortunately, this is where I started to have a lot of problems with the gun feeding, as you'll see. I'm not quite sure if either of us hit each other here or if the other player even fired his gun. We're going! The president's been They're trying to move it now! Ready? Everybody! Fire! Fire your guns! Fire your guns!
Grenade, grenade, grenade! Stay there, stay there! It's a thunder bee, but it might be a dud. Light off, light off, turn on light off. Do you want to take it? He's on the outside. He's on the outside to the left. I got, I got you, I got you. Go now, go now, go now. Depending on when you're watching this video, Airsoft Innovations may or may not still be in business. We will address that after I give you my final thoughts on the Flak 10 Super Shotgun itself. The most standout thing about the Airsoft Innovations Flak 10 is it is really fun to shoot. Like, I had a blast, like literally just shooting this gun and playing with it. It's something that's completely different than any other airsoft gun that's out there right now, just because of the sheer amount of volume of plastic you are sending down range at other players. This also makes it kind of a unique gun as well. With that many BBs being sprayed at your opponents, pain does come into a factor however that in itself is highly subjective as we saw in the video one guy took 20 shots straight to his back and didn't care he didn't even really mention it at all and then another guy got hit with three bbs and he just kind of kept going on about it not quite sure if it hurt him or not but it was enough for him to just want to talk to me more about what the gun does how much it like how many bbs it shot its fps jewels etc so some people are going to say it hurts, some people are going to say it doesn't matter. Again, it is very highly subjective and I think a lot of factors are in that too, where you get hit, how close, etc, etc, etc. One thing that's very uncommon is for me to be able to use a gun in a lot of different environments. So first we took this to an arena, then the forest, and then an urban combat setting. The gun excels the most in the CQB arena. Fast paced games where your single shot counts, this is when this gun really shines because Instead of giving yourself one chance or three chances or six chances to hit somebody, you're giving yourself 10 chances with 10 BBs heading down range. And it's pretty effective. In the forest setting, the point was proven that this gun can shoot through a lot of brush. However, because of its low velocity and low joules, it's not ideal. Honestly, anyone that was outside of about 25 feet, I wasn't going to be able to hit. Actually, yeah, I really just had no option except for <laughs> to wait for people to get close because I wasn't going to be able to effectively close the distance between them without getting shot before I was in range to, to use this. So uh, outdoor, not so great. Urban environment, this gun does pretty well. Unfortunately, that's when the gun performed the most poorly. So let's talk about performance. So when I went to Tax City, gun performed flawlessly. I was using these Crytac mid caps and they fed great. For the Desert Fox event at George Air Force Base, I uh, adjusted the rip out force uh, system, which is right here, to use PTS EPM ones. I wanted to have the maximum amount of BBs per magazine. This magazine holds 250 BBs, which is 50 BBs short of a normal uh, M4 high cap, which holds 300 BBs. Once I adjusted the rip out force system, though, these would not feed as great. I would probably get about two shots that actually fed, and then after that, the gun just would not feed, and that would be immediately after reloading a new mag. The Flak 10 also does not perform well in cold weather whatsoever. I would not recommend getting this gun if you live in a in a region where it tends to get cold because you're only going to be able to use this thing in warmer climates. A couple of other smaller problems with the gun. I would have had liked to have seen some built-in sling attachment points. Obviously there is a lot of space here on the body 
uh, AI opted to do these M lock slots here. However, the M lock slots I don't think are to the correct spec. I think the thickness of the body is a little too much for most M lock screws too. To get this Fortis grip on here, I had to use a much longer screw and some washers and stuff. It's it's on there pretty janky, quite honestly, and I I don't really like that, but uh, I made it work. Another very frustrating problem with this gun is the safety is very touchy or finicky. Uh, there were a couple times where I went to squeeze the trigger and I thought the safety was disengaged but it was actually engaged so the safety will make this big locking noise and you can kind of hear it makes multiple clicks. If you don't push it out all the way of safe um, and you only like give it like a little kind of small push uh, sometimes the safety will become engaged and it, it, that's really frustrating when you're in the middle of engaging <laughs> an, en an a enemy opponent. I don't think I captured it on camera, I'm not sure, uh, where I would squeeze the trigger and yeah, just uh, the, the gun would not fire because the safety was on. I'd have to push the button in again and by that time the enemy player is long gone and I've missed my opportunity. Now you couple that with the funky trigger pulling that makes weird noises when you don't give it a full pull. In cold weather it would just make strange noises. The overall performance of this gun was just barely above bad only because the first two times I played with the gun it was great. But the third time it just performed pretty terrible and it was very very frustrating. So I'm going to give it an okay but that's an okay that's just like here's bad and then like here's okay now we can't talk about airsoft innovations without addressing what is currently happening to their company and for that we've got to go down the timeline of the flak 10. i'm going to refer to airsoft innovations as ai from here on out because airsoft innovations is way too long for me to say in every other sentence. December 2nd, 2020, the first FLAC 10 trigger teaser video comes out and some more teasers come out toward the end of December. April 7th, 2021, we get our first YouTube video of the gun in action along with the start of pre-orders. Fast forward to October 7th, 2021, pictures of the first batch of bodies is posted on AI social media. Now, I couldn't find it anywhere in my research. Um, I'm sure, I have a feeling it was probably mentioned somewhere, I just didn't find it. I have no idea how many guns were in that first batch. An average amount of first batch pre-orders from a manufacturer is around 500 guns. January 10th, 2022, AI posts that is working on its third batch of FLAC 10s. Going off that average number, there would hopefully be somewhere around 300 to 500 of these guns now. AI is a smaller company, so I don't expect them to crank out 500. January 20th, 2022, I received my FLAC 10. However, I'm not able to use it immediately because that's around the time I got COVID and I was doing a bunch of other projects. March 3rd, 2022, AI attends EWA. March 11th, 2022, Airsoft Atlanta calls out AI for not fulfilling retailer orders. A handful of pre-orders direct from the AI website were fulfilled, but the majority are not. You can read the entire post from Airsoft Atlanta. The link is below in the description, and it basically calls them out as being a Ponzi scheme. March 12th, 2022, I personally have finished two thirds of this video, but to be fair, I wanted to get a statement from AI. AI asked for a week to give any kind of statement because quote, things in play slash process. March 17th through 19th, 2022, more companies begin to call out AI. There has also been nothing but radio silence from them since EWA. Lots of people took to the internet to talk, to comment all over the place talking about how they've been calling and emailing AI and there has been nothing but silence from them. Which is immensely frustrating if you spent the $600 on the pre-order for this gun. March 23rd, 2022, AI is ready to give me a statement, but it has to be over the phone. AI asked me not to record the phone call, so here's essentially what was explained to me. AI talked about long development problems and most notably supply issues. We all know that supply issues are causing lots of problems in lots of industries right now. However, when you look at this video of the FLAC 10 trigger being made, we can see a lot of that scarce material being presumably wasted. 
The rest of the conversation was spent rehashing the development problems and how it was fitting that Airsoft Atlanta, who were the first US retailers to carry AI products, were the ones to quote unquote, take them down. Personally, what I gathered from that phone call was that it seemed like AI was just kind of poorly mismanaged from the start. And then this ambitious project of the FLAC 10 is what they gambled the whole company on and they just lost that gamble. This is a shame. Personally, I really like Airsoft Innovation products and I'm sure a lot of other people do too. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what happens to Airsoft Innovations now? In my opinion, the ideal scenario is that AI sells its patent to another company. This company can continue to produce AI products that players love and possibly develop a better version of the FLAC 10. The best scenario for AI is that an angel investor invests into the company and it can continue to operate, hopefully with more efficient management. If you've got some money bag friends who are looking to invest in Airsoft, this could be their chance. Um, unfortunately, word on the street is that all of these scenarios are very, very unlikely. My personal condolences to anyone that ordered a FLAC 10 and didn't receive one. I hope that in some way you're able to get your money back. This is a pretty expensive gun. $600 is a lot to spend on something and then you never get it. I'll be continuing to use my FLAC 10 so you can vicariously use it through my videos, I guess. Uh, it's not much of a consolation, but it's the best that I can do. I'm sorry. That's going to wrap up this review of the Airsoft Innovations FLAC 10 slash what the F is happening with Airsoft Innovations. And as always, this is Jet Desert Fox, and I'll see you on the field.